Hello there, you're watching Biz World. The development of Malaysia's halal industry requires the integration of Islamic financial products and services as well as sectoral activities. Deputy Finance Minister Wan Datuk Muhammad Shah Abdullah said these include capital raising and the financial inclusion of micro, small and medium enterprises. Malaysian local products have the potential to, to be marketed at the global level. This will require collaboration between the private and public sector again to help develop brand value and utilizing new media technology. Collaborative efforts are required to support an innovation-led growth of Malaysia halal industry and develop more homegrown halal champions, particularly amongst the micro, small and medium enterprises, MSMEs. He also pointed out that the halal industry continues to face several issues and challenges, such as the lack of capacity for innovation to produce high-value added products and services. Many MSMEs have also not been fully integrated into the global halal supply chain, as many do not have halal certification. Last year, halal exports climbed 19% to 36.3 billion ringgit, accounting for 2.9% of Malaysia's overall exports. The top products are food and beverage, cosmetics and personal care, palm oil derivatives and pharmaceuticals. There is no need to hoard or front-load U.S. dollar purchases. In stressing the matter, Bank Negara said this as the weakening of the ringgit is due to the strength of the greenback. Its governor, Tan Sri Nor Shamsiyah Muhammad Yunus, said the central bank will ensure the country's onshore foreign exchange market remains liquid, so businesses can be assured that all their foreign currency needs can be efficiently fulfilled. As such, corporates and domestic financial institutions should also be prudent in managing their balance sheets. In the meantime, she reiterated that the Malaysian economy is not in a crisis and its growth trajectory remains positive. However, the country needs to reform to become an innovation-based economy to secure its future. The economic recovery, she said, is well underway due to its strong economic fundamentals and financial system. Foreign investors continued to be net sellers last week, marking the fourth consecutive week of net foreign fund outflows from Bursa Malaysia. This as they pulled out 740.6 million ringgit compared to the withdrawal of 562.6 million ringgit in the previous week. MIDF research said foreign net outflows were seen across the week, with the heaviest outflows recorded on Monday, followed by Wednesday and Thursday. International investors had been net buyers for 24 out of the 39 weeks with a total net inflow of 6.6 .6 billion ringgit. In contrast, local institutions were net buyers during every trading day last week with the heaviest inflow recorded on Monday at 224 million ringgit. Meanwhile, Malaysia's economic growth momentum appeared positive as seen by the continued expansion in July's leading index, which grew 4.1% year-on-year. MIDF Research also maintained its 2022 GDP growth forecast at 6.6%, strengthening from the weak growth last year, which was affected by the nationwide lockdown. The Research House, in its monthly economic report, stated that leading index predicts the country's economic direction is four to six months ahead on average. However, MIDF reckons the sharp monthly decline in July's leading index of minus 2% from June's was an early sign of softer growth prospects. Other downside risks to the near-term outlook include increased volatility in global financial markets, weaker growth in major trading partner economies and a sustained rise in inflation. Petronas Deepwater Development Project Gumusut Kakap GK Phase 3 off the coast of Sabah achieved its first oil production on July 31st. According to its statement, two new oil producer wells and two water injector wells were drilled. The four wells will add around 25,000 barrels per day to GK's existing production capacity once fully completed in the first quarter of next year. The operator of the GK project include Sabah Shell Petroleum in partnership with Petronas Charigali and Kanaka. Philips Saba. According to Petronas, whilst the shallow inboard areas continue to underpin the country's production, the future lies in the deep water plays, which make up a quarter of its offshore acreages. That's all the time we have for Biz World. I'm Nadia Azmi. Thank you for investing your time with us.
Oh, <laughs>